What's good, everybody? This is Algebra One with Mr. Peters. Today, guys, we're going to be talking about how to solve two-step equations. But before we get started, I'm going to ask you all to like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and leave any comments for videos you'd like to see in the future. Let's get started. So imagine we had the problem that says 6x plus 8 is equal to 50. Now remember, our goal is to figure out what x is. But I just want to say um, list, I should say list about three important steps on how to solve, right? So when it comes to solving these equations and they start to get a little bit more complicated, first thing you want to do is locate your variable, right? What are we solving for? So we're going to locate the variable. And after we locate the variable, we want to isolate it, right? And understand that isolate means just get it by itself on one side of the equal sign. And then after we isolate, we want to use those inverse operations, right? Those opposite operations. So we're working backwards to solve. And I'm going to use these three principles when solving. So the first thing I understand, I located my variable x. And what they're saying in this problem is that we're going to multiply 6 and x, add 8, and we should get an answer of 50. So if we want to have this 6x by itself on one side of the equal sign, the first thing we probably need to do is focus on moving 8 to the other side. So the opposite, right? What is the opposite of a positive 8? A negative 8, right? So what we want to do is subtract 8 from itself. And that cancels out. That's 0. We're only left with 6x on that left-hand side of the equal sign. And now we're going to go and apply that same step of subtracting 8 on the other side. So now... I'll combine 50 and my negative 8 to get 42, and I'm going to write the rest of my problem. So 6x is equal to 42. So at this step now, guys, this is our second and final step. It's saying, hey, you're going to multiply 6 times a number and get 42. So we're going to think the opposite of multiplication, right? So for us to get x absolutely by itself, we're now going to have to divide by 6. It's the opposite of multiplication, division. And then we'll go on the opposite side of the equal sign, and we're going to do the same thing. And what I notice is x, right, is now equal to 42 divided by 6, and we should know that our answer is just 7. Now, to make sure that we're right, the fourth and final step is just going to be to check. So what we want to do now is take that x and plug it back into the original equation. So I'm saying that 6 times 7 plus 8 is equal to 50. And if that left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, we know that we did the right steps. So like we said, 6 times 7 is 42. We're going to bring down the rest of our equation. And once I combine 42 and 8, I will notice that 50 is equal to 50. And Mr. Peters is right again. <laughs> All right. So let's go on to another problem. But in this problem, we're going to switch it up a little bit. So let's say in our second problem, we just so happen to have a fraction. So let's say we had 3x, I'm sorry, 3x over 5, right, or 3 over 5's x, plus 22 is equal to 28. All right, so step one, we located our variable, and now our next step is to say, hey, what can we do to get 3 over 5's x? absolutely by itself on one side of the equal sign. 
And when I look, I think I should move 22 over to the other side. I should combine it with 28. But how are we going to do that, guys? Yeah, so if we're talking about a positive 22, right, plus 22, what we want to do now is to subtract that number. We want to work backwards. So we're going to subtract 22 from itself, and then we're going to go ahead and do it on the other side of the equal sign to its like term. And we'll notice now that we have 3 over 5's x is equal to 6. Now, when it comes to fractions, I teach students two ways how to do this. I like to split the fraction as well as divide by the fraction. So in the first thing, what we're going to do is split the fraction. So when you split the fraction, and oh, I can't believe I wrote my x down there. I'm sorry. When we split the fraction, we're going to get rid of the denominator, right? And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to multiply the denominator by itself, right? Just cross, cross cancel. And we'll go on the other side and do the same thing. So now what we have is 3x is equal to 6 times 5, right? Which is 30. And after we go ahead now, or well actually when we get to this step now, we're going to want to now divide, right? Because it's telling us that we're doing 3 times a number is equal to 30. So we're going to divide by 3 to figure out what that number is. And once we do, we'll get x is equal to 10. But before we check it, guys, let's just go back. And let's actually rewrite this step, and we're going to divide by the entire fraction rather than splitting it. So this is what I mean. So we're going to divide by 3 over 5, right? So what happens is everything gets, everything gets canceled out, right? We're going to go on the other side now of the equal sign, and we're going to do the same exact thing. But the trickiest thing about... Dividing with fractions is we have to remember that we're going to keep it, flip, and then multiply. So what this means is 3 over 5 is now going to turn into 5 over 3. And to solve, we're going to multiply straight across, meaning 6 times 5 and 1 times 3. And once we do this, we notice that we're going to get about the same answer. X is equal to 30 over 3. And once we simplify, that answer is just 10 like we had previously. All right. So let's say um, let's go back now and just double check this before we wrap it on up. Get a little bit more space. So we have 3 over 5 times 10, right? Because that's what our x was. Plus 22 is equal to 28. So let's just say we put this 10 over 1, right? Multiply straight across. We'll have 30 over 5 plus 22 is equal to 28. So guys, remember... Simplifying our fraction, 30 over 5 is just 6. And once we simplify this to 6, we're going to rewrite the rest of our equation and then add our like terms. After we add 6 and 22, we know that 28 is absolutely equal to 28. So remember, guys, when you're solving equations, Four very important steps. Locate your variable. Understand what the problem was going on in the problem. Isolate the variable and get it on one side of the equal sign by itself. And then our last step is to go ahead and use those inverse operations, right? Working backwards and undoing operations to figure out what our variable is. 
And just to be safe, we always want to double check and plug that number back in and see if it's the correct answer. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. This is Algebra One with Mr. Peters. Join us next time. <laughs>